Hallelujah. Praise our Father, Yah. Shalom Alechem. Peace be unto you. We want to welcome you to the channel. And today, the Holy Spirit has moved upon me to bring this message to you as I was searching and looking uh, through other people uh, online. And I want to make a disclaimer that I'm new to this. This is my second video. Many of you already know this. If you're new to the channel, welcome again. But today I want to, I want to talk about our foundation. And before we go into the foundation, we would like to pray. And with doing that, if you could bow your heads or raise your hands, however you, however you feel comfortable, whatever is comfortable for you and how you worship the Lord, that's what we do. We worship first, praise and glorify. So hallelujah, hallelujah, Father, Yah. Glory be to the Father, you are the Most High, the God, our God Almighty. And we thank you for this message that you bring, and we thank you for the message received that brought me to this point, how you moved upon me to preach the word of the foundation. And we ask for your blessings over this message, and we ask for your blessings over uh, the lost, that you may uh, soften their hearts and shine your light upon them so that they may see the truth. Father, we ask for your kindness and grace above all the, the, the disbelievers that they may come to believe, that they may leave the deception Satan has put upon the world and see your truth and light that we are very close, Lord. I pray that you come quickly. In the name of Yahushua, we pray, amen. So, brothers and sisters, the foundation is where we need to build our rock upon, or, or I should say our rock should be our foundation. Jesus is our rock. Yahusha, some call him Yahusha, Yeshua. He has many names. I have researched that as well. I, I am continually researching uh, upon his name and upon uh, lots of things as, that are in the Bible. And I have my Bible right here. I plan on, you can see all the, the spots we're going to go through today. And, and if you could, I ask that you break out your Bibles. I hope you do. And notepad, piece of paper and pencil, pen, take notes. I had to do it as well, and I do it continually. Uh, so... With our prayer out of the way, let's move into the foundation building. And I was in this teaching several months back. And this morning, looking at a, a video that this, you know, that wasn't even, I didn't feel was a scriptural motivated video, I felt revelation the Spirit moved upon me and showed me something in that video I never knew, never even thought about. And it brought me back to this foundation teaching that I was a part of several months ago. And if you could, if you can turn your Bibles to Luke chapter 11, uh, verse 49 through 51 I'll, I'll start reading there. It says, bear with me, I'm having trouble seeing. I got to get my, these glasses aren't prescription. Verse 49 says, therefore also said the wisdom of God. I will send them prophets and apostles and some of them they shall slay and persecute. Now we were all through the Bible. We know how John the Baptist was persecuted and slayed. Uh, there were several more, Philip, uh, uh, Stephen, all of those, I believe Philip, I'm not, I may be wrong on that one, but I know Philip, I mean, uh, Stephen and, and uh, John the Baptist and uh, several more were slain. They even tried to kill Daniel. 
They tried to put him in the lion's den. God wouldn't let that happen because faith was so great. Verse 50 is that, that the blood of all, let me turn the page here, all the prophets which was shed from the foundation of the world may be required of this generation. So the blood we know when Cain killed his brother Abel, the Abel's blood was crying out to the Lord. So the blood that we hold holds our DNA. It's life on this world, on this pagan world that we live in, this 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 temporary home that we are a part of. So when when our we get persecuted and slain for Jesus' name, our blood crieth out to the Lord. Even though we're not here, we don't see it, you know, us alive, we don't see these things. Lord heard he hears it. It's crying out to him. Verse 50, woe unto you, lawyers, for you have taken away the key of knowledge. Mm, I heard a scripture this morning about don't lose your keys. Keep them keys. I got my keys. Even though this, this device right here, let me get my finger right. That device I'm using to reach you is a deception. Everybody's using it for an idol. That phone, mm-hmm, they, they, they nose deep in it and don't even know what's going on in the world. Ain't even paying attention. They're so deceived. Ye entered not in yourselves, and them that were entertaining in ye hindred. So he's warning, warning us that we need to do as this is this is just me. What forty nine said. He sent forth apostles and prophets. What to do to build a foundation? How do we build that foundation? Faith through the grace, and then the spreading of his word. We go forth and we sow seeds. Okay, let's go to Psalms 11 and 3. Psalms 11 and 3. If the foundations be destroyed... That's what Satan's trying to do. He's trying to destroy the foundations by with all his deceptions. What can the righteous do? We can read the word. Stay in the word. Pray without ceasing. Read without ceasing. Study to show ourselves approved. That's, that's basically what that one is, is we got to build our foundation and we got to, we got to stay in the word. That's how we answer that question. Stay in the word, hundred percent faith in the Lord, no faith in man. Matthew 24, four, take heed, no man deceive you. Don't trust what I say. Read. Study for yourselves to show yourself approved. That's how I do it. I listen to people. I listen to what they say. I don't follow what they say unless after prayer and worship and, and asking for the wisdom and the Holy Spirit to fill me and give me his discernment and understanding and he answers the questions that I pray for, then, only then, do I fall on those understandings as truth. They have to come from the Most High. They have to come through the heart filled with the Holy Spirit. They have to. It's the only way. The only way is to trust in Yahusha. Uh, many call him Jesus. I've researched all of that, and I've come to the conclusion that I like the name Yahusha. I like that. It, there was a time uh, back in the day that the Hebrews changed a couple of their letters in their script because they were jealous. They were jealous that the Gentiles would know the Lord's true name. 
they changed a couple of letters around. If you do your studies, if you search deep enough, you will find these things. So for me, there's, there's, I have a, a study, ongoing study, uh, over the name of the Lord, over the Messiah's real name. I have, still have an ongoing, ongoing search for that. I, I, I desperately search his name because of my love for the Most High. My love causes these things that he is in my heart as, as I am in his, and he is in the Father's as the Father is in his. He is, they're both the same. One's the spirit, one's the flesh on the earth. They're the same. This one true God. And I believe that with all my heart. And I study and, and look for these things because my love pushes me that way. Okay, let's move on. Uh, Jeremiah chapter 30. Jeremiah chapter 30. That is wrong way. Psalms. I got it right here. Right there, Jeremiah chapter 30. And we want to go to verses 11. No, I'm sorry. Jeremiah chapter 30. I'm, I'm, these things, they're not prescription. I have to get way back here. Uh, Jeremiah chapter 30, 1 through 3. That's the, that's the verses. It says, The word came to Jeremiah from the Lord. That is the Holy Spirit moving within him. He had faith. You have to have faith to hear the word of the Lord. I used to, uh, back in my evil days, I won't call them evil days, back when I was not a follower, I didn't carry my cross. I didn't know all the things that I know today. I always believed that I would physically hear the Lord's voice like you're here in mine right now. And when you talk to me, I hear your voice. That's what I thought. No, he speaks to us in mysterious, we call it mystery, he works in mysterious ways. He speaks to us. Sometimes you hear that small, still voice. You have to make discernment that it's not Satan and his demons tricking you. You have to, you have to make sure that that's not what's going on. And he also sends you scripture out of the blue. This, this thoughts out of the blue. And those as well, you have to make sure you have to trust in the Lord and seek him to discern whether it's him or the demons trying to reach you. Because the closer you get with God, the stronger the demons try to deceive you and make you fall away. Now, in my last video, I tried to tell, you know, I tried to show wisdom that, uh, once saved, always saved. I don't believe in that. I believe that there are some people who are saved and the Lord knows these people. He knows all things. There are some people that will be saved that will never fall away, that their, their faith in the Lord is so strong that they repent constantly. They know the truth of the scripture, that they repent constantly, that they will not lose their salvation. I, I truly believe that. But to say the sinner's prayer and do it in vain and then run around in your drugs and tracing, chasing women and, and, and following the sports stars and the musicians and their paganistic rituals that, that most people don't even know they're involved in, those people think they're saved. They're not going nowhere. They're going to stay right here. They, they might be saved after the rapture. I truly believe the pre-trib rapture. I believe that those that are truly saved and truly walking in the spirit will be raptured before tribulation starts. Now, the great tribulation. We're in a time of sorrows. We're in a, we've been in, the world's been in tribulation since Eve took a bite of that fruit. When Satan deceived her, tribulation started. We've been in tribulation ever since. So that's not the tribulation I'm talking about. I'm talking about the wrath of the Most High. When Jesus opens the seals and the angels blow the trumpets, those are going to be great tribulation. 
that's that's coming. We're really, really close. Any Say it could be any second now. It could be, poof, right now, while I'm talking to you, pow, I could be gone, or you could be gone, and I might be still here. I'm, I'm trying with all diligence to stay humble, walk in the Spirit, read my Bible, and sow the seed. Now, I'm learning to sow the seed. Because that's what this foundation is going to hit. This is where we're going. This is where we're going with this teaching right here. This foundation is sowing seeds. So that hopefully we pray to the Lord most high that sowing of these seeds, we gather more fruit for the harvest. That's a parable. I hope you understand that. I hope you understand that. The Bible was written in parables so the, the faithful would understand and the deception uh, the folks deceived would not understand. You have to you have to come to the Lord before you actually fully get uh, anywhere close to the understanding. As the pool is deep, you need to get out of the shallow end and start learning how to swim and uh, holding your breath, trying to get down there to that drain to see what's really going on. Yeah. So. Uh, uh, verse 2 is, Thus speaketh the Lord, God of Israel, saying, Write these all the words that I have spoken unto thee in a book. That's where this comes in. Now, I also believe that, that we need to write. I think we need to write. I don't, I don't, I don't scar up my Bible. I don't, I'm, scar might be a bad word. I don't write in my Bible. I, I, many people do. That's so your notes are right there with the scripture. I don't do that. I write mine up here in this, and I got three tablets going. I write them. I got one that's a final. It's like a turn in. It's a test. You know, the one you turn in to get graded on. I guess you could say as a parable. It's it's the one for my essay. That's the that's my final exam over there. Uh, but this one is just a rough copy. It's it's rough. I got another one that I take notes in to start my rough copy, and this is what I I used to when I was going to Bible school, and uh, not Bible school, but Sunday school, uh, uh, Bible studies before church, uh, the brick and mortar before they said some things. This 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 certain this certain brick and mortar said some things. And uh, I haven't been back. Uh, once they said that, that moved upon me uh, in my discernment that they were they were not fully they weren't fully uh, walking with the Lord. I don't believe. I, I mean, they 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 know a lot of stuff. Many people do, but I don't believe they were they were truly truly. And I had my first my first visit my first visit. I'm standing with my cousin. And the, the the lead pastor, the lead pastor of the church came to comfort her over the death of her father and his look upon me. His look upon me, and I'll explain all of this in a second. Uh, he didn't look too happy. He had that, he had that look like that, you know what I'm talking about? He had that, he didn't have a, Hello, how are you doing? Welcome to the church. It wasn't I? He was like, now everybody else in the congregation, yeah, yeah, they love me. They, 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 they was welcoming to me my first time there, welcoming. But I didn't like that. I didn't. I saw that, and I was like, hmm, what can we? Hmm, let me pray upon that. Let me, let me ask the Father what's really going on. And then the next week, I go back and. In the Sunday school, the the pastor there in the Sunday school, the the, the teacher, minister, deacon, whatever he is, uh, he went into preaching O A S O A S O S A S. I'm sorry, O S A S. Once saved, always saved. He pr started preaching that doctrine that, and to me, when you when you go into that, you're tell you're preaching to folks that it's okay to sin. I don't, I don't, mm -mm, no, no, sin, it, it's all through the Bible, you cannot sin, can't do it, 
No, you must repent. You must repent and try not to. You know, we all stumble. I'm not perfect. I stumble. Stumble all the time. So I repent. As soon as I stumble, I'm trying to repent because the Holy Spirit moves on me and says, Oh, oh, what did you just do? You know that wasn't right. And I'm like, Oh, let me repent. Because we to, tomorrow is not promised. You can say your prayers at night. You know, a lot of people just say a prayer at night before they go to bed like it's all going to happen while we're asleep. Mm -mm. It could happen while you're at work, driving down the road, eating, you know, your lunch, eating your breakfast. We don't know. We're to watch. We're to scope it out. We're looking. We're, we're studying. We know we're in the season. And brother of mine, brother Anthony says, you know, if you're always ready, you ain't got to get ready. So I believe the OSAS group are wanting to live, uh, continue to live in their pagan lifestyles. There's lots of stuff is pagan. A lot of stuff is pagan and they want to, they want to live in that stuff. And then they want to know the exact time and date when it's going to happen so they can Get right with the Lord. Nah. No, that, that's, they're living their life in vain. Truly, they're living their life in vain. And I've gotten way, way off subject here. Way off subject on the foundation. For in the days come, saith the Lord, that I will bring again the captivity. No, we got to get the second one. Thus, the, thus speaketh the Lord God of Israel, saying, write these things in a book. Yes, that's what we're that's what we were talking about, right? Things in the book. I'm scatterbrained. Forgive me, forgive me. I just get off. I go out there. Woo! I can just. I love him so much that that I just want to talk and talk and talk and talk and talk and just talk all day long about the Lord. If you want to call me, don't think this is going to be a 15 minute conversation. Mm, I'm gonna, you're gonna to have to force me off the phone if we're talking about the Most High. You're going to have to force me off the phone because I just want to, I love him and I want to talk about him. I want to talk about him. He has changed my life and I can see, I can see how he feels and then, and, and, and I just get this feeling. I get the feeling it, it, it's like, it's like dopamine. I guess you could call it is that what that stuff is. It works in your brain when you, when you drinking and smoking and, and uh, jumping off of buildings with a parachute, you get that. You get that. Uh, that high is it a high of? Uh, it's a stimulant that makes you feel woo. Yes, that's what I get with the Most High. Now, he gives it to me, and I don't need none of these worldly things to get that feeling. And I'm, I'm. Just like the druggies, I'm trying to get that feeling from the Most High constantly. I'm trying to, uh, oh, wow. I'm just trying to get that feeling. I'm trying to get it. And verse 3 says, For in the days come, saith the Lord, that I will bring again the captivity of my people Israel and Judah, saith the Lord, and I will cause them to return to the land that I gave to their fathers, and they shall possess it. Now, whether those people over there in Israel are true Jews or not, I have no idea. I have no idea. I don't know. I've studied our ethnics. I've studied a lot of that. And I don't know. Now, many, many, many people that I have, you know, uh, used for study, I listen to what they say, but I really don't feel that it's I may be wrong, but I just don't feel that their race is really independent or, or important, not independent, but important of who they are. I just know that supposedly their, their, uh, their Hebrew, Jewish Hebrew, I think there's two different things going on there. I think, I think I'll search into that too, but I think those people are who they are through their mother's dis descent and the book says most of everything that comes forth is from the father and their forefathers that's what the scripture just said their forefathers so are those people in israel really 
the true Hebrew Israelites? Are they? I don't know. I don't know, but I know this. They're fruitful over there. They're, they're, they have a lot of prosperity, so something's going on that, that leans hard to what's in this book in the end times. It's, it's leaning hard, very hard. It's hard to deny that those are not the right people. So whether they're the Gentiles trampling down the, the temple, as it says in this book, it will happen. It, it, maybe that's what's going on. But something's, something is actually, you know, truthfully going on over there. You know, they, they uh, last I heard, I think they were like in the top 15 of the GDP in the world, somewhere in that neighborhood. They, technology, maybe not the GDP, but their technology they're uh, over there harvesting w water. Check this out. They're harvesting water out of the air. They're, they're, they're collecting the moisture right out of the air for drinking water. Are we doing that in the U.S.? Nah. Nah, we, we can barely agree to get a, a, a salutation or whatever they call it, a, a salutation plant on the oceans to extract the salt out of the ocean so we can have plenty of drinking water to, to end the famines of thirst. So we have plenty of drinking water so we can water our crops. They won't even do that. Every time we get to, get to that point, I shoot that down. Shoot it down. We can't do that. That costs too much money. Let's go nuclear. Let's contaminate the world. So let's go to Isaiah 34 and verse 16. And I have this verse uh, circled for some reason. Let me see what this word is. It's, and I have it highlighted. It says, read, study the word. The word shall not foil or fail. None shall want her meat. M-E-T-E. -E. That means... Uh, uh, don't want it to be used. So let's go to Isaiah. Chapter 34 and verse 16. It says, Speak ye out of the book of the Lord. So that's why I'm that's why I got this baby. That's why I got her. This is it right here. Foundation. This is our foundation. I've never seen the Lord. All those, all those pictures uh, given to us through, who knows, uh, take heed, no man deceive you. Those pictures that those ancients, the, the, the statues, mm -mm, no, no, can't do it. Can't do it. They're using them for idols. That's against, that's blasphemy. They're using, they're going against the commandments. That, that, that the, the Lord, when he walked this earth, he told the Pharisees, the, the, the first and great commandment was to love thy God with all thy heart and soul and might. That covers the first four commandments. If you love him, if you truly love him, you will seek him, you will obey him, and you will praise him, you will worship him, you will do everything that makes him happy. That's why we're here, to make him happy. That's why we're here. So, verse 16. Seek ye out of the book of the Lord and read. No one of theirs shall fail. No one of these. My bad. No, my bad. bad, bad, bad. None of these shall fail. None of these words. None. None, none of these words shall fail. None of them shall fail. None shall want, commanded. No, wait a minute. None shall want her mate, for my mouth it hath commanded, and his spirit it has gathered them. So, there it is. The foundation God commanded that we take these scriptures and sow some seeds. 
Remember that parable, sowing them seeds. Mark chapter 4. Go there and, and read that whole chapter. Mark chapter 4 is all about sowing the seeds. If you, if you read it slowly, read it several times. Don't just speed through it and then go, uh, take your time. Everything in this book, take your time. Read a little bit of it. Pray on it. Ask for the discernment of what's in there. And you will see it will come to you. What's really, really meaning. Now, there are several, most of these scriptures, if not all of them, have several completely different meanings. Uh, an example of that means uh, to love your father with all your heart means you want to worship him. That means you'll not put any, any graven images, idols above him are in between you and him. That's what that means. That's what that means. You won't do none of this stuff. Uh, take heed, no man deceive you means they're going to lie to you. Satan's going to use them, evil people, to lie to you. And the Lord is going to pour out his spirit upon you, and or upon the world, actually. And they're going to believe the lie because they don't believe in, they don't have faith in the Lord. They're going to believe the lie. That's what's going on today. That's exactly, exactly what's going on today. Those people are deceived. They don't want to hear the truth. They, they are, they are, uh, what was that first scripture I, I read about the, 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 the device? I'm trying to use this device against Satan. But so many people have been brainwashed and, and, and with the dopamine, they get that feeling because they want to watch those movies and, and, and they're so caught up in, in the, the, the devices. Uh, the sports stars, they're, they're idolizing sports stars and movie stars and musicians. They idolize them above all else. And there, I can go into deep. I can go deep into those different meanings. I may have done a bad job here probably uh, like i said i'm not perfect and all of this is on the whim this is just came about a couple of hours ago uh watching videos uh it hit me when watching this video i was like hmm this is interesting you know the video itself was interesting and then all of a sudden pow i heard something this man said i'm like whoa whoa you know and you'll get it you'll get it uh, when the Lord moves on you, if you're paying attention, it'll come on to you really quick. It'll be strong. And you'll know that the Lord is talking to you because once you become his sheep, you know his voice. And by knowing his voice, it's not uh, a vocal sound wave. It, 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 it can be. His voice is going to sound like a trumpet. That's what the his Israelites heard at the Mount Sinai. They heard, they heard the trumpet. And to them, they didn't believe just yet. I don't know how. You can't believe when you're when a when a pillar of fire and smoke saves you and parts the Red Sea and, and, and keeps the Egyptians off of you and guides you through a desert and, and gives you manna and then produces water out of a rock. How can you not believe in the most high? seeing all this stuff those people seen with their own eyes and they still fell away they still the brainwashing of satan being in captivity for 500 years in egypt you know and learning the babylonian way uh it really was strong in them it was it was how you say it it was uh just like today, it's hard for people to let go of that. It's hard for people to let go of uh, the root of all evil. Let me just say it that way. The root of all evil. You know what that is, right? It's the lust of money. Not money itself, but the lust of it. So, I go way back. I go way back uh, before before money 
One prayer says that the Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He maketh me to lie down in green pasture. He didn't make me to go to work, earn money so I could pay for this phone bill and so I could, you know, uh, buy this house and buy that car out there and, and go to all these concerts and watch all these movies. That's not what he put me here for. So you get something to think about, something to think about, you know, when you're trying to build your foundation. What are you building your foundation on? Are you building your foundation on this world? Or are you building your foundation on the word of the Messiah, uh, the one and only Almighty? Are you building your foundation on him? So in Ecclesiastes, let's go to Ecclesiastes. Ecclesiastes chapter 1, verse 9. It says, The thing that hath been, it is that which shall be. So nothing has, nothing's new. And that which is done is that which shall be done. That means, you know, we all talk about how history is going to repeat itself. Mm -hmm, right here, right here. History is prophesied to repeat itself. And there is no new thing under the sun. <whistles> Nothing new under the sun. So if you, if you study history, especially biblical history, that, that's the most important part. That's the most important part because this history book right here, I trust and believe is nothing but the truth. Nothing but the truth in this history book. All those other history books, take heed no man deceive you. Study them hard. Study them long. Study them with an open mind that the Lord may show you wisdom in those books, that you may discern those truths that lie in there and, and see, I'm telling you right now, there are, there are lies in those history books that man wrote. This bad boy, yeah, the finger of man, God used his finger to write this, but this was given to us by the Holy Spirit through man. Those other history books were given to us by man, through man, what he thinks, what he saw, or what he read. You know, what's that old saying about if I tell you a story and you go to your neighbor and you tell them a story and then that neighbor goes down the street and tells another neighbor and so forth and so forth and so forth and three years later it comes all the way back around the globe after it's done traveled all these languages and all these neighbors and comes back to me, it changed. Mm-hmm. We know that saying, right? Trust and believe that's what's going on in them history books if some of those history books weren't purposely written in lies. Written in lies. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Research it. Okay, let's go on. Move on to uh, my, my notes on Ecclesiastes 119. Uh, I also have written down here 315, chapter 3, verse 15. Let's go to that. I have, Yah requires that which is past. History respects nothing new under the sun. It respects it because it's going to do it again. If it had respect for it, it wouldn't do it again. He has to repeat it over and over and over to try to drill it in our minds that what we're doing wrong is wrong, that we need to repent, come back toward the Lord. That's where we started. We all started with the Lord. He walked among us until we ate that fruit. 319. And who knoweth whether he shall be a wise man or a fool? You got to pray for this. If you don't pray for it, you're a fool. If you pray for it, wisdom is in the Lord. Ye shall he have rule over all my labor wherein I have labored. 
and wherein I have showed myself wise under the sun, because we study the word, this is also vanity. So if you're, if I'm telling you that I'm studying this word and, and I'm not acting and, and bringing forth the word and I'm, I'm uh, uh, using this to get you deceived by telling you the wrong meaning of what this stuff called, does, then I'm doing it in vain. That's when I'm going to come to the Lord, you know, if, if I'm doing it in vain or those people that do it in vain, I should say, when they go to the Lord and say, I've done all these things in your name, the Lord's going to say, mm-mm, mm-mm, you did it to get rich. You got, you did it for the, for the wealth of this world. You laid your treasures up in this world. Therefore, I don't know you. Depart from me. And Archangel Gabriel is going to shut the gate on you. You're going to be outside. <whistles> is that where you want to be? That's not where I want to be. That's why I'm studying and I'm bringing you truth, but yet I still want you to study for yourselves. Don't just go on what I say. I bring you mental stimulation. Try to open your mind so that you may think for yourselves and ask for the Lord's discernment that you may also be showed approved. That's why I do what I do. And I love every, each and every one of you as my own flesh because that's the way we're supposed to be. We're, I, I do this because I love my flesh and I want, I don't love my flesh of the world. I love myself as a, uh, a, a cross bearer. I'm the cup bearer. I sacrifice myself for the word of the Lord. Uh, I give you these tithings, this right here is tithings that I give to you to spread and sow these seeds that I may touch some hearts and bring some souls to the to the one and only God Almighty. That's that's the purpose of this video. I'm going to make more videos. This is you've probably found many errors <laughs> because I am no movie star. Uh, this is all coming from the heart and, uh, I'm trying and I will learn, I will get better. Uh, the love of the Lord has me here and there will be much more. And let's go to Joshua chapter nine because this video is already 42 minutes long. Uh, Joshua chapter nine. says deception will not prevail verse 3 and when the inhabitants of Gibeon heard what Joshua had done unto Jericho and the AI or uh, IE I want to call that the IE it's uh, a apostrophe dash I it's I'm thinking it's some sort of uh, let's see does it have a where did it go right there? No, it doesn't have, it doesn't have uh, what that is. I'm thinking that's a, that's a city, city in uh, Jerusalem, uh, old Israel, a city. Uh, it says, deception will not prevail. The deceiver will become a bondman and go into bondage. And when the inhabitants of Gibeon heard what Joshua had done unto Jericho and to Ai, Let's go into chapter, uh, verse 4 and see what else. They did work willingly and went and made as if they had been ambassadors and took old sacks upon their asses and wine bottles old and rent and bound up. And old shoes and clothes upon their feet. Oh, they tricked Joshua. They tricked him. And old shoes and clothes upon their feet and old garments upon them and all the bread of their provisions was dry and moldy. And they went to Joshua until the camp at Gil Gilgal and said unto him and to the men of Israel, we become from a 
far country. Now, therefore, make ye a league with us. This is where they lied to Joshua and, and deceived him and lied so that uh, they would not fall. I'm thinking this is why the Philistine, why the Gaza Strip and the West Bank still exists today, why Israel is still, those people over there are still uh, in turmoil back and forth with the Philistines, the, the, uh, what they call the Palestinians today. Those, because Gaza and the Gaza Strip was the land of the Philistines. Uh, that's where Goliath was from. He was from some city there around in that neighborhood. It's, the city is actually in Israel right now. But back then, that was Philistinian land. That was, you know, between Egypt and Israel. So that's, we're not to, we're not to uh, build a foundation on lies and deception. We're supposed to bring the truth, and, and that's what I was saying. I want you to study uh, what I bring forth and uh, for yourself. Think for yourself. Ask, ask for your own revelation. Get your own discernment from the Lord, and he will make you wise. And hopefully, just like any fruit, any vegetable, uh, I got one fruit. I dig so many seeds out of this thing. And then I re-sow them, and more fruit comes up. And then what happens then? If we get seeds out of all that fruit, and we sow it again, it multiplies and multiplies and multiplies, and pretty soon we have the whole world are faithful. That's That was the goal. That was the, you know, I can preach upon that as well, you know, what what, what I believe the purpose of why we're here truly why we're here many people don't know they think they think some things but i can i can go I'll, I'll i'll make a video of that i'll go into that whether you want to you know maybe to open your mind uh so you can see cause we're to listen this is this is what i believe and, and the prayer call that i'm involved involved in that i i try to uh uh congregate in as my brick and mortar church now uh, it, it's uh, as we're two come together in the name of the Lord, the Lord shall be with us. So I, uh, it, it's good. And uh, we hear other people and their understanding, put it this way, their, the, the understanding that they have of the scripture. We hear what they understand. We, we, we listen we try to listen. I hope everybody does. I do. Try to listen with an open mind to, to, to get a grasp of what they see, understand, uh, the discernment that I hope the Lord gave them. Because again, what I mean is every scripture has many different meanings. And if we only know our meaning, we're very shallow. But if we get the meaning from other people, what they see, sometimes it's the same as ours. Sometimes you get something that you didn't know of, that you never thought of. Uh, it makes sense. It, and, it, and it doesn't contradict what you know. It doesn't go against what you know. It confirms what you know. But even though it's a different meaning, you, you, you may not understand what I'm saying, but if you try it, if you open your mind and accept just the words that they give you, now I'm not saying you need to make them your foundation. You, we got to pray and ask for the truth of the Lord. We got to ask for His truth that we should uh, add that brick, add that 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 slab to our foundation. Our foundation is our altar. We build it out of stone. We don't hew any of those stones. Hew means take tools and carve to sculpt. No, we don't do that. We take them in however form we found them and we put them together and make an altar. And we don't, we don't put mortar to hold it together. We don't need mortar. We have the Lord Almighty to hold it together. 
we put our faith in him, he'll hold our altar together. So, 2 Samuel, turn your Bibles to 2 Samuel, chapter 21. And the very first, very first scripture in chapter 21 says, There was a famine years. No, I mean, I'm sorry. There was a famine in the days of David three years. Year after year. And David inquired of the Lord. And the Lord answered. I told you he would answer you if you if you inquire, if you pray. If you fast and pray and uh, have 100% faith, you have enough faith in the Lord, he will answer you. And we all know David, until he, you know, fell when he saw the beautiful woman taking a bath, he fell. He did a lot of wrong stuff back in the day. But before all that, he was he was after God's heart. He was dancing, bringing a, uh, uh, the covenant, the 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 uh, the ark to the new temple, to the first temple. He was bringing it. The Lord did answer. It is for Saul and for his bloody house because he slew the Gibeonites. So the famine David was under was because of King Saul, the king before David, because King Saul was jealous of David and he did some wrong things. He, 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 uh, he was blessed. King Saul was blessed by the Lord and given David to defeat the Philistines. King Saul was blessed in the beginning, but then... Like many people do, you know, this all goes back to the once saved, always saved. Why are all these people falling from grace? Why? Why? Think about it. That's what that is. So, again, once you build your foundation, you got to stand on your foundation. You can't. You can't fall off of it. You can't, you gotta, you gotta stand strong, keep the faith, no matter what you go through, no matter what kind of fear. What are we in today? What are they, what are they, what's the media spreading to you people on TV? Fear. Mm-hmm. They're using fear to make you lose faith. Fear over faith. The level of your faith determines the level of your fear. If you got 10% fear, you got 90%. I mean, if you got 10% faith, you got 90% fear. If you got 100% faith, there is no fear. You should know what's in between, right? You know, back and forth. You should know what's in between. 50% fear, 50% faith. So if you have 100% faith, there's no fear because I have 100% faith and no fear and the parlors, they want me to have fear. Therefore, I can't, I can't go because I don't have fear. I will not bow down. I will not bow down to their fear. None of their tactics. Because take heed, no man deceive you. I know the truth. I've researched the truth. I know what's really going on. And I'm trying to build a foundation. It started, believe you me, it started. I I, I want to strengthen, strengthen my foundation. And part of that foundation building, or the building of rather, not, not a structural place, but... Uh, the work invested in building the foundation is sowing these seeds and bringing bringing these uh, scriptures to you, uh, bringing you my discernment through these scriptures, 
and helping you to hopefully open your minds, open your hearts to the Lord. Hope you open your, that's the, that's the thing is soften your heart, hearken unto him, uh, unto him, uh, and, and, and see the light that he is shining because light destroys darkness. If you have a light in a room, how do you, how does darkness win? If you have darkness in a room, how does, how does, uh, the light win? All you gotta do is flip the switch. Light comes on. Darkness is gone. You actually physically have to take the light out of the way to have any darkness. Light is more powerful than darkness. So Jesus is a light. He is the way. He guides our path. If we walk in the light, this little light of mine, I'm going to let it shine. This little light of mine, I'm going to let it shine. If we let the light shine, there is no darkness. We have full faith in the Lord. We have understanding. And we built our foundation. So, this is becoming a long video, and I got, I'm only halfway through all these scriptures of that teaching, but let's get to the meat of the subject, because uh, it's 56 minutes, and I want to finish it. The video I saw today was about uh, the location of Israel, where, where the, the land was. And I want to I wanna, uh, fill you in that this video I saw, the guy, when, when he was talking about this video, he was talking about world powers of the day. And they all, if you was in Egypt, remember Egypt was a world power. Babylon was a world power. Uh, Greco-Roman, the Ottoman Empire, uh, 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 Edom, Persia, uh, uh, Assyria, all those places had power and they were they were jostling back and forth. One would rise up and then another would come and beat them. Well, they didn't have many boats back then. They did have boats, but most of the travel was either, you know, camel, horses, wagons, and what's not. You know, we think we're going back to days of Abraham. I mean, they go way back. He had camels and sheep and, and, and I'm guessing horses. I don't know. But... Egypt had to travel through Israel to get to uh, Babylon. Babylon had to travel through Egypt, I mean, through Israel to get to Egypt. So if, Egypt, if, if Israel, if the Hebrews were the chosen people, now, again, you know, they, they, they've rebelled a lot. They've come and gone, come and gone, come and gone uh, in the rebellion and in their faith. But the moral of the story is, is all the Egypt and Babylon are pagan, Roman, Greco-Roman, everything around Israel is pagan. They're surrounded by paganism. Uh, paganism, you know, Buddha, Hindu, Islam, all that stuff is paganism. It's all worshiping a false god. Uh, Islam, Allah, if you translate that word Allah, it does translate into English as God, but it's not the God. It's the uh, uh, God of the morning, which Satan is, the, he's the God of the morning, the moon God, the lesser light. Now, they all worship the sun. They thought the sun, S-U-N, they thought that was, if you look at all the Egyptian uh, drawings on their little obelisks and walls and whatnot, temples, uh, pyramids, all that stuff inside the pyramids, you see the, you see the sun above their head, two horns that wrap around it with a big sun. If it's not a sun, it's some sort of a, uh, like a circulish uh, with rays coming out of it. Same thing, right? So they worship the sun. So what the purpose of Israel being in that one spot was, not only is that area the true, this is where the historians are lying to you. It's not down there in Ethiopia. The true cradle of civilization is the Middle East. Israel. 
Israel is supposed to be is supposed to be from the Mediterranean Sea all the way over to the Euphrates, Tigris, or I think it's the Euphrates, it's all the way over to the Persian Gulf, pretty close. He gave them all that land. It says it in the scripture. It tells you all the way. It's not just from Dan to Be Beersheba. It, it's from that river over close to the Nile all the way up to above Lebanon. There's another a mountain. or I, I'll have to look it up again. There's a mountain or another river up there, land of somewhere, and all the way over. So back in 48, when they got their land back, they, they, and before 48, they already gave Jordan some land, shrunk the, they, you know, they gave Jordan their, the land that they have is God's territory. It's supposed to be in Hebrew. Assyria, Assyria is the same way, not Assyria, but Syria, mm -hmm, Lebanon, all those countries came about before Israel. Israel came in 48. So all those countries back in the day, when they were trading goods, going back and forth, they were going through Israel. So that is the foundation that while they were passing through, they might hear the word of the Almighty. So it was trying to convert paganism. That's why God planted them there in the middle, is so they can preach to the strangers coming through, coming to and fro. That's the basis of, of my foundation. I, I'm adding that to my, my foundation study. I never knew that. I never even thought about, you know, people passing to and fro somewhere that could actually get the wisdom and, and discernment. We are, we are, our faith comes from hearing the word and then our grace comes from reading the word. So with that said, I hope you gained, I, I pray that you gained uh, some knowledge. I hope that your, uh, anyone that's not uh, a believer, I hope they're, hearts are softened, that you may study, study this book, uh, listen to many people, don't just listen to one person, listen to many people, uh, and you need to put all those people in the wine press, God's another parable, put them in the wine press and squish out the tares from the wheat, get rid of the bad grapes from the good grapes. And the more you study, the easier it will be. The more you study, the easier it will be. And we love you. Uh, we pray for you. And uh, Alechum Shalom. That's unto you peace.